Hello, BookTube. I have yet another mail haul for you. This is book haul number six of 2017. Uh, fairly good size uh, of pile of packages here. So let's, let's take a look at what we have. Uh, and I should, while I'm wrestling this first one open, I should remi remind you all, uh, let me know uh, in the comments field if you want to, if any of these strike you as particularly of interest. Uh, because that's, that's a, a part of the deal here, is that once I'm done with these things, nine out of ten of them, I'm not going to keep anyway. So, you know, if you want it, uh, there's no reason you shouldn't have it. Uh, let's see here. So this first one is uh, uh, is by Anthony Horowitz. And uh, this is it's a murder mystery that comes out in June called Magpie Murders. <laughs> That's a sirloin cut magpie on the cover. That's kind of a nice design. Uh, this, I don't know what this means the lead read. I'll find out. It's like a publishing gimmick. Uh, pushes the boundaries of the classical mystery novel in surprising directions and is diabolically clever, the, mur the magpie murders. With its inventive novel within a novel structure, this magnificent piece of crime fiction plays with the genre while also taking it seriously, says the UK's Sunday Times. Paying homage to time-honored traditions of the Golden Age whodunit and wrapping them within a completely contemporary exploration of the craft of fiction writing, the novel provides not one, but two brilliantly plotted and subtly interconnected mysteries for readers to solve amid expertly planted clues and devious red herrings. Okay, well, this is... This author is extremely talented. Otherwise, I would say that description means that this author, whoever's writing this a book that fits that description, is taking on way too much. And is going to fail but more often than he succeeds. Um, Susan Ryland has edited, has edited all eight of Alan Conway's previous crime novels featuring the eccentric private detective Atticus Pund. And she looks forward to spending the weekend reading number nine. But when she reaches the end of the manuscript for Magpie Murders... She is both perplexed and perturbed to find that the last chapter is missing. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> in late 2015, this author was responsible for a novel that I, I didn't get a chance to mention on this channel. Had I been on BookTube, I would have cried it to the rooftops, called Trigger Mortis. <laughs> Allow me to tell you sometime the fretful tale of Steve and clever titles. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we move on to this thing, one of these annoying cardboard things that you have to destroy and to open. Uh, huh, okay. This is by Kat Marnell, How to Murder Your Life. Uh, it says it's a memoir. Got end of the day light here, so I don't. We'll we'll we'll, we'll navigate it. We've, you're you're used to technical difficulties on this channel. Uh, How to murder your life comes with blurbs from Jessica Knoll, from Booklist, and one from the New York Post that is simply jaw dropping. I have never read a memoir that was jaw dropping. <laughs> I uh, once watched a volcano erupt. My jaw dropped a little there. <laughs> Once watched about 50 sharks tear apart a whale carcass, my jaw dropped a little there. You may recognize Kat Marnell's name from her Amphetamine Logic column at Vice. Nope, nope, and nope. <laughs> or her time as a beauty editor at xojane.com, where she chronicled her addiction in real time. All right, well, there are four more paragraphs of that. <laughs> How to Murder Your Life. Uh, uh, Let's move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's, all right. Uh, all right. This is from Hachette. Oh, wonderful article. Well, it almost didn't make it to me. It's in, it's in rough shape. But uh, it's a, it, this is also a memoir, but much more up Steve's alley. This is The President Will See You Now. Uh, this is uh, Peggy Grant's memoir of her time at in the late Reagan White House. Uh, let's see here. Uh, dear editor or producer, in November, as a new dawn arrived for the GOP. One aspect of Republican politics remains unchanged, a near universal and unwavering reverence for Ronald Reagan, whose son denounced the winner of the Republican primary. And ev the winner was also denounced by every leading Republican. 
until he looked like he was going to be the winner. Uh, whether it's Vice President-elect Mike Pence invoking a fundamental similarity between Reagan and Donald Trump at a recent speech at the Reagan Library, or Stephen Colbert's recent tongue-in-cheek advice to House Speaker Paul Ryan during the 2016 campaign to just shut your eyes and think of Reagan, most Americans seem to agree the Reagan presidency and legacy represents the best of America. Elegant, humble, and charismatic, Ronald Reagan reshaped conservatism, ushered in a new era of prosperity, and helped spur the end of the Cold War. Okay. All right. Okay. He reshaped conservatism. That's true. Uh, he made it into a uh, revival tent of personality, free of principle. Uh, and he helped to end the Cold War. That is absolutely and unambiguously true. He said that system cannot sustain itself, and if we just are tough and wait, it will collapse under its own weight. Uh, and he was right. Uh, and the middle one, ushered in a new era of prosperity? <laughs> All right, well, so this comes out in uh, February. I will certainly review it. Uh, but Reagan ushered in a new era of prosperity? Think back to the vice presidential candidate debates between Dan Quayle and Lloyd Benson. Most of you hadn't been born yet then, but... Uh, Dan Quayle was this fresh-faced junior senator who knew nothing, and, and you could tell, take one look at him and tell that he knew nothing. And Lloyd Benson was old Texas money, an old Texas machine politician, and just plain old. <laughs> I think he signed the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and at one point, Dan Quayle talked about a new era of prosperity, and Lloyd Benson pulled him up short and said, if I spent eight years writing checks that I couldn't cash, I could create the illusion of prosperity, too. The audience didn't like the line. It was absolutely true. It was exactly what happened. <laughs> Audiences don't like that kind of thing. <laughs> but I'm used to Reagan getting all sorts of credit for stuff that he didn't do. Uh, and I like reading about him anyway, so we'll see. Uh, all right, what's this next one? Oh, my God, it's a graphic novel. <laughs> Today in Jen's library. I hope you're watching. It's not just a, a mass market. It's a Jill Shalvis mass market. Oh my god. <laughs> Your favorite romance author. Oh, fantastic. This is Avon Books. Oh, I'm going to have to write to the publicist and ask for more, more, more. <laughs> right, this goes out in January, 20, January 24th. Oh, fantastic. It's a Heartbreaker Bay novel. This phenomenon that's popular in romance now of uh, setting a dozen stories around a location rather than a character or anything like that. Uh, there's no such thing as a little in love. Ellie Wheaton's priorities, friends, career, and kick-ass shoes. Then there's the muscular wall of stubbornness that security expert Archer Hunt, who comes before everything else, his name couldn't be Floyd, it has to be Archer Hunt. <laughs> and, and his parents named him that when he was a baby assured that he would grow up to be how was it again a muscular wall of stubbornness rather than spavine with, with coke bottle glasses <laughs> imagine if he were that and 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 was still called archer hunt <laughs> no point in telling mr feels free zone that though ellie will just see other men until she gets over archer which should only take a lifetime okay well <laughs> it's a pretty mass market romance so Steve is happy. <laughs> let's, let's move on from there. What an emotional roller coaster ride these book openings are. No wonder you all like them so much. <laughs> I lose sight of that until I, I play one of the back and realize you never know what's coming. <laughs> and I've somehow got weird, encrusted opinions on all of it. <laughs> all right, what have we got here? Oh, oh, very good. Oh, I requested this. This is Paul Bogard. This is The Ground Beneath Us. Uh... From the oldest cities to the last wilderness, what dirt tells us about who we are. Fantastic. This comes out in March. Uh, good, uh, solid, popular science. I just love that sort of thing. Uh, we'll see if it's any good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's, let's move on. I noticed that the end of the day light is failing, and that makes me Adam at Memento Mori, who's constantly filming videos with five minutes left of sunlight. <laughs> like the, <laughs> and nobody wants to be like Adam. <laughs> All right, this is Audacity uh, by Jonathan Chait. Uh, I actually have already reviewed this, so 
this this finished copy is good that's good I'll, i'm glad to have it but uh the subtitle is how barack obama defied his critics and created a legacy that will prevail uh even though we know that it won't we, we know that it won't there won't be a single bit of his legacy that prevails except for the existence of him a, a, a calm articulate adult black president there's nothing that can change the fact that that happened that america did that for eight years uh, so that, I guess, will be a legacy in its own. Not not what the president was thinking, I'm sure. But I love the, uh, I heard about this actually on social media, the, the publicity material. Uh, instead of blurbs from book list or library journal, they have a tweet from Donald Trump criticizing the author. Assuming, I think rightly, that that will mean sales. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, let's see here. It reminds me of a time, a long time ago in the 80s, uh, the horror author Clive Barker, his publisher used, in the UK, his publisher used to put negative reviews on the covers of his books just to, just to goose up the interest level. I thought that was genius when it happened. Uh, all right. Okay, good. Oh, fantastic. All right. This is the, uh, the finished copy of Instrumental by James Rhodes. Let me get you a, a, a super hottie look. There's the, there's the super hottie James Rhodes. Uh, who struggled with uh, abuse and and all sorts of psychological problems in order to become, in order to overcome them and become a popular concert pianist. And this is his memoir, a memoir of madness, medication, and music. Great. Okay, this comes out in early February. Uh, I have been sort of theoretically looking forward to this book. I, I will read it with great interest. Uh, it strikes me, just the, the listening to him talk and, what, and even listening to him play, strikes me that he wouldn't, sign his name to a book that was boring. So I'm, I'm kind of quasi hoping that I will like it. <laughs> uh, and then let's see here. What's this next one? We only got one more to go. Uh, oh. Oh, this is a Kirkus book. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so it's a, it's a self-published uh, Kirkus book that's due in February. Historical novel. Uh, about three, two women in love with the same man, General Dwight Eisenhower. Wow. Okay. That sounds like something that I would have gotten at uh, Historical Novel Society. Uh, uh, it's called The General's Women. I should I probably show it to you because I doubt I'll talk about it again. Uh, by Susan uh, Wittig Albert, who it's her, her blurb says New York Times bestselling author, and although anybody see, everybody uses that blurb, I actually think in this case it's true. Isn't she a murder mystery writer? A uh, really good light cozy murder mysteries don't i remember her from that uh she's a non-fiction new york times best-selling author of more than 50 adult novels and works of non-fiction doesn't go into specifics i'll have to look it up but i seem to remember that i have liked her work uh that's interesting uh and then we have final thing uh, for mail hall number six <laughs> uh, this thing here what is it oh it's two things all right so what have we got here? Who have we got here? Oh, good. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. This comes out in late March it's by Annie Jacobson, and it is called Phenomena. <laughs> and the enormous subtitle is the, Hero the Secret History of the U.S. Government's Investigation into Extrasensory Perception and Psychokinesis. <laughs> oh, this is a book about a team of scientists and, sci and, and psychics with top secret clearances. For more than 40 years, the U.S. government has researched extrasensory perception, using it in attempts to locate hostages, fugitives, secret bases, and downed fighter jets to divine other nations' secrets and even to predict future threats to national security. Uh, don't need it anymore now that we have Twitter. <laughs> uh, the intelligence agencies and military services involved include the CIA, the DIA, the NSA, the DEA, Navy, Air Force, and Army, and even the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Notice the one missing. DARPA. Oh, okay. Uh, now, for the first time, New York Times bestselling author Annie Jacobson tells the story of these radical, controversial programs using never-before-seen declassified documents as well as exclusive interviews. Oh, fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Uh... Okay, great. Uh, so that comes out in the, in the spring. I'll, uh, I'll run it by some editors. It doesn't seem like... I'll write about it for open letters. It doesn't... It's the sort of thing that editors will particularly like. Uh, and then our last one is a made-up story. 
Uh, it's a, a debut novel. Is it a debut novel? It's called The Futures by Annie Petoniak. Uh, let's, who is she when she's at home? She's an editor at Random House. Graduated from Yale in 2010. Pfft, who didn't do that? <laughs> Where she was an editor of the Yale Daily News. She grew up in Whistler, British Columbia, and now lives in New York City. So is this a debut novel? Is this a debut novel? Mm, yes, it is. This is a debut novel. All right. Uh, what's it about? What's it about? Uh, brilliantly captures the sensations of ambition, hope, and terror with which an outsider approaches New York City. <laughs> I once did that. I was once an outsider taking the train to work in New York City for the first time. Uh, ambition, hope, and terror. I felt hope and terror, no ambition. Uh, regardless of how far you've come since your own days of wandering wide-eyed in the wilderness of your 20s, Petoniak's dazzling coming-of-age coming-to-the-city debut will resonate with you. Julia and Evan fall in love as undergraduates at Yale. For Evan, a scholarship student from the rural Canadian town... Uh -oh. Okay, British Columbia, Yale, okay. Yale is a whole new world, and Julia, blonde, beautiful, and rich, fits perfectly into the future he's envisioned for himself. After graduation, and on the eve of great financial meltdown of 2008, they move together to New York City, where Evan lands a job at a hedge fund. ruh -roh. <laughs> But Julia, whose privileged connections yield her an easy but wholly unsatisfying job with a non-profit, feels increasingly shut out of Evan's secretive world. Okay. All right. Well, it's it's a debut novel, and you never know. Uh, it, it could it could leap off the page. It's uh, it's true that it's about upper middle class Connecticut divorce, but uh, aren't they all? <laughs> People wonder why I like the Knicks for Pete's sake. <laughs> anyway, this comes out on, in uh, January seventeenth, uh, so it's right around the corner. I'll have to I'll have to uh, get online, get get to the emails, and see if anybody I know is reviewing this. Uh, uh, we'll have to see uh, see if, if it's got any, any if it's on anybody's desk I won't be reviewing it I don't think I'll write about it for open letters but I won't be reviewing it uh, for anywhere else I don't think uh, wow that's a great cover though look at that I wonder if you can make out the details of that cover that is an older picture that is a New York that has a water tower on every roof that's the New York that I knew uh, it's not like that anymore uh, I don't know but it it, no, it just must be the uh, the neighborhood because there you've got in the corner there you've got a new building. So, uh, huh? Well, anyway, all right. So we have a uh, debut novel. We have ESP. <laughs> Everything you wanted to know about ESP, we were afraid to ask. The self-published novel uh, called *The General's Women*. We have *Instrumental*, a, a memoir about uh, music and drug addiction. We have *Audacity*. A book about uh, President Obama. We have The Ground Beneath Us, a study of dirt, and what it tells us about ourselves. We have The President Will See You Now, about the final days of the Reagan administration. We have How to Murder Your Life, uh, a memoir by, uh, by a woman who chronicled her addiction in real time. Uh, and we have The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. Uh, and we have a Jill Chavez novel, uh, Accidentally on Purpose. So that is uh, Mail Hall number six for 2017 and when i floated the question about whether or not you people really wanted to see every single mail hall i got back unequivocal yeses on many different modes of communication so <laughs> uh, i think i think elisa from paper bits emailed me and said we want every single mail hall or i'll make paper bits out of you capiche <laughs> So I guess that's what we'll do. <laughs> and uh, we'll see. If it gets tedious for you, for you then we'll uh, we'll stop. But otherwise, uh, I'll catch you up on the mail hall next time. Uh, and I'll see you soon, BookTube. Thank you. Sorry for the length of the video.